I'd like to begin my discussion by thanking Mr. Bolo, who spent a great deal of time meeting with uh, representatives uh, from the transportation industry to try to hammer out some sort of a, a concession for us here in Cornwall. And uh, I, um, I wish Mr. Bolo's report had good news for us, and except for the faint bulk clause at the end, it really doesn't, but that's no fault of Mr. Bolo's, and I wish it could be otherwise. But I have to think that um, at this point, um, it's really it's difficult to hear hard things, but I don't think we can accept hard things. And, and I know that Mr. Barlow is hopeful we'll, we'll be getting a concession. I don't think it's enough. I think that the problem we're facing here is basically um, the bus industry is um, a free uh, enterprise, and they don't owe us anything. But I think that what's gotten lost in the evolution or the devolution of the service as it affects us is public, um, the public interest is being lost. And I understand the profit motive that drives the bus industry. But what I don't understand is that in spite of our best efforts to run a good mass transit service here in Cornwall, we are being basically abandoned by senior levels of government who I think have to recognize and take some sort of consideration for the public interest to serve it. Because, you know, part of our Charter of Rights and Freedoms states that one of the freedoms Canadians have is the freedom of mobility. And there are all sorts of qualifications to that article in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms that speak to the economic necessity of mobility for Canadians. But there's no clause that says, you know, all Canadians who have the money or have their own car should have freedom of mobility, and only them. So I really think that senior levels of government have to step up to the plate somehow and ensure that the public interest is addressed here. So I would like to suggest, maybe ask Mr. Barlow if he thinks this might be a good idea, should we as a council, as a small city, attempt to engage AMO and FCM in this? Because I understand this isn't just a Cornwall problem. Um, I know I was at a convention last weekend and it was a resolution about the, the fact that Northern Ontario, uh, Ontario Northland is going to be privatized, which is going to mean less service, obviously there. And I think uh, other cities our size are being impacted by the decisions that the, the transportation industry are making which they're making to enhance their, their shareholders, that's their mandate. But we're being left in the cold and stranded. So I just wonder if this is something that we should take out of AMO and FCM rather than just say, there's nothing else we can do because it's beyond our can. I wonder what Mr. Baldo would think of that as a, as a place to go next. Thank you, uh, for you, Mr. Mayor. I'm less uh, familiar with uh, AMO and FCM uh, in my own personal experience. Um, I suppose it's, it's an avenue that could be uh, looked at. I think also, if I was to perhaps, uh, I did review some of the locations <coughs> of vehicles and so on and other communities, but I didn't actually speak with some of those communities. So I suppose if I could uh, speak to some of those, uh, especially the, you know, those that are between here in Toronto to understand what their experience is. Uh, I know, you know, if, if I looked at the examples, there were a number of them who Unfortunately, like ourselves, uh, do not have a deep hook. You know, the transit routes uh, don't get into the downtowns of many communities. Um, I think there are a couple that come to mind that do. Uh, but for the most part, you're seeing uh, the locations right on the highway so that the companies don't have to take some time out of the schedule. So it's a, it's a tough thing. Um, I guess thinking further uh, to, to some of the comments that I made in the report, it's unfortunate, I guess, that we have three companies that we're trying to coordinate. I think in the past, um, when we had one company that was serving Cornwall with, with uh, intra-city bus service, of course, it was much easier because everyone was familiar with where they, they, they went. Uh, but we now have three companies that are serving the community, and it's very difficult to coordinate the three of them to be at one location. So, um, but I, I could certainly contact some of the other communities to understand what their experience is in, in terms of trying to get, you know, are they dealing with more than one company and, and uh, are they coming off the highway for them? I personally think that would be very, very useful to us because I don't think this is a problem that's going to be solved quickly. It's a problem that's developed over time, you know, piecemeal and in a fragmented manner. And I think that maybe we have to take baby steps to get back to uh, some sort of situation where a resident won't have to pay more money in a taxi fare to get to a bus, which is the cheapest form of transportation, in order to, to travel to some other town. 
and I just can't help but think of at dinner tonight, Mrs. Lafay mentioned somebody who was looking for a bus for economic purposes, for work purposes, to go to Maxwell, and she was able to point to him to Delaney. But our service is just so utterly fragmented, and as some people need, so I, I hope we can go farther, and I, I like this idea, so we'll do it, and then maybe after that, we might want to bring something formal to make this a point of discussion at any more. Uh, maybe the, uh, the broad, broadly recommended water that it is.